Chapter 7 is going to deal with reactions and aqueous solutions, and it's going to be a quick chapter to go through. We're going to start off by looking at predicting whether a reaction will occur or not. Let's take a look at that. Remember we talked about driving forces, or things that force chemical change or cause chemical changes to happen. Formation of a solid is one, and that's the precipitation reaction like we've been seeing in the lab this week. Formation of water, transfer of electrons, and formation of a gas. So reactions that form a solid are called precipitation reactions. So precipitation is the formation of a solid in a reaction. The precipitate is the solid formed by the reaction. And the whole thing is called a precipitation reaction. Let me take a look here at this um, picture. We see that the clear liquid here and a clear yellow liquid here put together. And you notice there's definitely a precipitate that's come out. And like I said, you've seen reactions like this happen in the lab just within this last week. We've talked before about different types of ions and what ionic compounds would look like. So, for example, we'll just write down NaCl. That's an ionic compound. How do we know it's ionic? This goes back to our naming chapter. So, sodium is um, an element on the far left-hand side that's going to tend to give up an electron and become a plus one when it reacts with chlorine. It's going to give its electron to chlorine. Chlorine is going to take that electron and become negatively charged. So, they have transferred electrons. Here's our cation and here's our anion. So what happens when we put sodium chloride in water? Does it just stay in water and just leave chunks of sodium chloride? No, you know that you can put sodium chloride in water and it actually will dissolve. Well, the reason that happens is because these, these ions separate in water and they move around independently of each other. So if you look at this example here, you'll notice if this were salt that I put into the water, it would break up into its ions and float around in the water. The fact that sodium chloride dissociates into sodium ions and chloride ions makes it an electrolyte. And it's considered a strong electrolyte when each of the units um, of that substance separate completely or dissolve completely in water. So sodium chloride is a strong electrolyte. So electrolytes are things that are going to ionize or dissociate in water. We see that in metals and nonmetals put together in an ionic compound. We don't see that, however, when we talk about molecular compounds. Let's take another look at this reaction that we started with. This is a reaction of yellow potassium chromate, which is kind of hard to tell that it's yellow, but over here in the, in the uh, picture, this solution right here is the potassium chromate, and it has a clear look to it, but it's yellow. And we have colorless barium nitrate here in the flask. And when you put them together, you notice that there's this bright yellow precipitate that forms. So the question is, how do we predict what that possibly could be in the solution, this precipitate that forms? What you have to remember is that these are um, electrolytes. These are ionic compounds. Potassium is a true metal, and then we have a polyatomic ion that behaves as the nonmetal. Then we have barium, which is a true metal, and nitrate, which is the nonmetal with a negative one charge. So what we have to do is look and see what is actually going on inside of this flask. Because this is AQ, we talked about this in the last chapter, this is, stands for AQUEOUS, which is aqueous, which means that it's in a water solution and it's dissociated. So let's just dissociate it. We have two potassium, so we'll have that like that. Potassium forms a plus one charge, so it gives its electron up, electrons up to uh, chromate. In this case, we have two of these. Chromate normally has a negative two charge, when it's reacted with something else. So what we're going to have is chromate with a negative two charge. So this is actually what's going on inside of this bottle that uh, they're pouring into the flask. The potassium and the chromate are uh, broken up into ions. In addition to those being broken into ions, we know that barium nitrate is also aqueous, which means it's broken up into ions. So let's go ahead and do that. So barium has a plus two charge. Nitrate, and we have two nitrates. We know that each nitrate has a negative one charge. And if you're not sure of those, those charges, remember that you've always got your polyatomic ion charge. Go back and check, as well as the periodic table. So now the question is, how do we predict these products, given that this is actually what's going on inside of the two solutions that are being put together? So here's another view of what we could uh, use to visualize what's going on inside of the reaction that we're looking at. So here's the potassium chromate. 
dissociated because it's aqueous. Here's the barium nitrate dissociated because it again is aqueous. And we're going to see what happens um, to produce that product. What substance are we looking at? So the mixed solutions have four types of ions. We have the positive potassium, the positive barium, the negative nitrate, and the negative chromate. So this is kind of like filling in a multiplication table. So we're going to fill in all the possibilities of uh, what could go together, what their um, products could be. We put potassium and nitrate together, it's KNO3. We put potassium and chromate together, it's K2CRO4. Remember, we have to balance those charges. We put barium and nitrate together, we get BANO32. And if we put barium and chromate together, we get BACRO4. On that chart, out of the four we came up with, two of those were reactants to begin with, the K2CRO4 and the BANO32. Those were reactants. So those really can't be considered part of the product because they were reactants and we visually saw a formation of a solid. That formation of the solid indicates that we no longer have just these two substances. So the other two possibilities are KNO3 and BACRO4, which is potassium nitrate and barium chromate. We uh, find out looking through reference materials that potassium nitrate is actually a white solid and barium chromate is a yellow solid. We're going to talk about solubility rules as well, and we're going to find out that nitrates are soluble in water, so they actually stay suspended. Barium chromate, however, is a solid in water, so it comes out of solution to form the precipitate. So what we've dealt with here is the barium chromate that's actually fallen to the bottom as the precipitate. So that lets us know what the two possible um, products are for this reaction. And I think this is as good a place as any to introduce the concept of a double displacement or double replacement reaction. So um, we talked in class a little bit about this, and I called it a double date switch. So let's see actually what's going on. So we have um, the potassium chromate, so K2CrO4, and it's aqueous. And we have the barium nitrate, which is also aqueous. And our possible products that we found by doing this are potassium nitrate, KNO3, which is aqueous. And we're going to talk in the lecture, uh, the next lecture, about how we determine if they're aqueous or solid a little bit more in depth. And barium chromate was the other one, BACRO4. It's a little sloppy there. And it was a solid. Okay, so we talked about the double date switch. So let's say, let me grab a highlighter. Um, we're going to mark um, potassium in this example is yellow, and so will be barium because those are our positive ions. And we're going to come down here and go ahead and mark the positive ions here. And let's use, um, let's use pink for the negative ions. So we'll just mark our negative ions here. And the reason I want to mark these like this is because if a reaction is going to occur, you're going to have... Uh, them switch whoever or whatever, whoever is it, if it's if it were in a date, but whatever they are um, attached to, they're going to switch those and have a different product. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that like has to go with um, the opposite. So we don't want a positive ion and a positive ion ending up together. They won't attract each other. It's the positive and the negative. So here's um, potassium, which is our positive ion. And it can either stay with chromate or it can end up with barium's um, other half. In this case, it was nitrate. So there's one possible product. So potassium and the nitrate, which is this here. And then the other possible product is the positive barium going with the negative chromate, which is the BACRO4 here. So um, just call it the double date switch because we have um, one couple and another couple going out together on a date and they end up actually switching dates at the end of the evening. So that's what happened in this case. And again, in the next lecture, we're going to talk about why there's a solid that is formed and why we even know a reaction occurs. And it's because a solid is formed in this precipitation reaction.